Hello, I'm Richard Van Wyhe with EV for You Custom Conversions, and welcome to another episode in this series How to Convert from Electric Gasoline to Electric, um, featuring our 1974 VW Carmen Ghia. In this episode, we're going to uh, discuss the motor adapter and installation of the adapter the flywheel, and the clutch, and testing the motor. Uh, and then uh, shortly we will be pulling the uh, engine out of the Carmen Ghia and doing the motor installation. Uh, but before that we're going to uh, weigh the Carmen Ghia uh, as it is in its current incarnation and find out what our axle weights are and our, our uh, gross weight. So we continue to move forward. Uh, it's been a while since our last video, but we now will start uh, accelerating because we kind of have a time frame in mind. Um, this has been uh, a project that we're doing in-house on the side in addition to our customer uh, projects. So it has you know, kind of been on the back burner, but we would like to have this car at the refuel event at Laguna Seca on July 1st. And so that gives us just over a month uh, to get this thing done. So hopefully the batteries come in this next week um, and uh, we have most of the other components in stock. The, uh, the big issue is going to be the, the charger. Unfortunately the charger we use comes from China that's going to be the um, weak link in our time frame is whether or not we get the charger in in time and get it installed. So fortunately the charger's um, the last thing. It's not going to hold up anything else and uh, we know where it's going to be mounted and so forth. So it's just a matter of having it in hand and, and doing the, the installation which is quick and easy. So that's kind of where we're standing at this point in time. It's currently um, May 20 something. I've kind of lost track. <laughs> um, but anyway, so we have uh, five or six weeks maximum to get this job done. So uh, we'll get on with the uh, motor mount installation. And then uh, we'd like to remind you also of our uh, three-day hands-on conversion workshops. The uh, first one for this season will be July 21st through 23rd. I think we have room for two more individuals in that particular workshop. Um, so visit our website at uh, ev4unow.com and, uh, and register for that. Uh, I think you'll enjoy it, get a lot out of it. It's part of its uh, classroom instruction, uh, maybe 15 to 20 percent, and uh, the rest is in the shop, hands-on, and we, because they're very small workshops, we can answer any questions you might have, we can deviate a little bit and, and do whatever the uh, participants are, are interested in. But what we will do is we will take a gasoline powered vehicle which will drive into the shop under gasoline power and three days later, uh, thanks to the efforts of the participants, it will leave the shop under its own electric power. So anyway, uh, we also uh, offer assistance uh, for those of you who are doing your own conversion but perhaps there's a, a segment in the conversion that you don't want to do, removing the gasoline engine, um, you know, installing the motor, whatever it might be, we will help you do it. Um, we have the shop space and equipment and uh, techs that can assist you in doing that. So anyway, visit our website, which explains all of the products and services that we offer, and then let's get on with the uh, episode. Okay, what we're doing today is we're going to mount 
the adapter coupler onto our Impulse 9 motor, which is what's going to be used in the Carmen Ghia. And uh, then we'll mount the uh, flywheel clutch and uh, attach 12 volts to it, spin it up, make sure the motor and everything works before we go through the hassle and install it in the vehicle. So, this is our adapter. This is the side that's going to mount to the motor. This is the side where the flywheel will go and the mating surface to the transaxle. We, uh, we like these for the VW. It handles the power and everything real nice. One piece. Very simple. We uh, featured these in another episode. And so if you want more information on that uh, coupler, uh, you can see that episode. So we're going to install our key in the keyway here. And we're going to attach the adapter and we want to make sure that uh, we have the right side up slide it on here and uh, there's a notch and so that is up and then there is a uh, series of holes that allow us to attach this any way we want but this is the uh, orientation we want right here. And then there's four bolts that will attach this. We use uh, the blue Loctite to, uh, to secure these. And so there are four of them that will attach this to the motor. There are three eighths coarse thread. It's going through a fairly thick aluminum there, so it's a little snug more than I can do with my fingers. Okay, I'll torque those down just yet. On these, we don't uh, have a particular torque setting that we use. But uh, we snug them down pretty good. This fits on a uh, little recessed or uh, relieved piece, so it fits in a in a groove on the adapter. And uh, once this is mounted in place, it's not going anywhere. They're very secure. Okay. Make sure this threads correctly. Don't want to strip aluminum threads. There we go. You can see this is a snug fit. It just actually kind of draws down to the motor. And so after uh, just snug and he's making sure everything is snug, then I will torque it down pretty good. Don't want to overdo it. This is a, 
an aluminum piece and you don't want to uh, strip these out. So. There we go. So now that we have our adapter in place, we want to mount our flywheel. We use a lightened flywheel. And the trick is getting it lined up on the dowels. And that's not wanting to go on very easy, so hang on. Rotate it a little bit here. Oh, that's not it either. No. There's one way where they all line up just right. These are all drilled for eight dowels for racing. So we have to find the right four that it draws down to. And that's it right there. Okay. Once that's on place, we will install the gland nut. And these are torqued. I'll have to double check. As often as I do this, you think I remember. I want to say 219 foot pounds, but uh, I'll double check that. But first, what we're going to do in order to torque this is um, we've mounted the motor on the workbench. We have a little tray that it sits on, a little wooden tray, and that cradles the motor on the workbench so it won't rotate. We also use that same tray on our uh, transmission jack. We use a transmission jack for installing most of these except for the ones that will come in through the top, depending on the vehicle. But on the, the VW, we come in from the bottom, and we use this transmission jack because it allows us to uh, articulate the motor to the precise angle we want for mating to the transaxle. And so then using this chain turnbuckle rag to protect the, the motor, we crank down this thing real tight, and it is not going anywhere. So next, what we're going to do, when we're going to have to torque this to over 200 foot-pounds, we need some way to, to keep this whole thing from going anywhere. So we're going to attach some uh, angle iron onto the flywheel that will not allow it to rotate. So let me grab that. We actually use two pieces that are uh, bolted together, quite uh, sturdy. It will not bend or give. Allows us to put the torque on here safely without any problem. So line that up. Just snug this down, it doesn't have to be torqued on here at all. We just want to mate and be held secure. Okay, that will then allow us to put the torque on there. Need your torque wrench and your socket. Then we will torque this thing on. Still drawing it down. Okay. Okay. Now we set our torque wrench 
and we will torque it to, to spec, which I will check here in just a moment. Uh, put all your weight in there to get it to, to spec there. Okay, once we have the gland net on, then we will install the clutch. Torque on the, uh, the uh, clutch. And those bolts are going to be torqued to 18 foot pounds. Remove our uh, support here. We won't use it for the clutch. For the clutch to hold the flywheel still, we use a different method. This out of the way. Okay. Here's our friction disc. Using a alignment tool, install the disc like such. And we will install the pressure plate using a locking washer and uh, bolts. This is a heavy duty clutch. This is what we typically use on the uh, stock conversions. We use uh, a light and flywheel and a heavy duty clutch. It's enough to handle the torque produced by either uh, the warp 9 or the impulse 9, which is what we use on the VWs, we've gone over that in the past, why we use the Impulse 9. It's the same diameter as the Warp 9. It's uh, just a little bit shorter in length. All the specs are pretty close. The, uh, the Warp 9 produces a little more torque, but uh, we build these as commuter cars and uh, not as a race car. If you want a race vehicle, we uh, it's a whole different animal, and uh, we do that also. But most of our customers are looking for a vehicle they can drive every day, just uh, normally. Okay. So when we go to torque these down, I will secure this flywheel using a flywheel lock. Here's our flywheel lock. It just Goes in the teeth here like that, threads into one of the mounting holes. Okay. 
Then we will tighten these up in uh, a cross pattern. I uh, pretty much just go until it's snug and like a revolution. So we bring it down evenly. Not putting any torque on it, we're just walking it in place. And once it's in place, then we'll get our torque wrench out and make sure that uh, it's to spec. But that little lock keeps it from rotating as we torque on it here. So that's a handy thing to have. After here to adapt the torque wrench down to uh, well, hang on, hang on. I have a 13 millimeter half inch drive somewhere. Okay, we'll set it to 18 foot pounds. There we go. Looks like I already just snug it with the speeder wrench on. Pretty much there. foot pounds isn't very much. But uh, make sure that every one of them's right there. All right. So there you have it. Very uh, very simple process. We have our adapter and coupling system in place. We have our flywheel and uh, clutch in place. It uh, is ready to be mounted in the vehicle. So we want to do one thing first, and that is um, bench test it, make sure that there's uh, nothing wrong with the motor. And uh, we'll do that right now. And uh, just want to use a 12 volt battery to do that. And uh, so let me hook it up and we'll, we'll go ahead and get started. Okay, let me explain what we're doing here. Uh, like you just saw, we've been installed the adapter, coupler, assembly, flywheel, and clutch onto our Impulse 9 motor. So now, before it gets installed in the vehicle, we want to run it up and make sure it's okay. So, what we've done is we've got our 12 volt battery. You only want to use 12 volts to do this. And we're running our 12 volt battery through a contactor. Just because we do this all the time, uh, we've got it set up. So we just bolt everything into place, connect everything. And uh, there's a, a jumper lead, which goes from your uh, A2 
to your S2. That's the standard uh, jumpering that you will have when it's in the vehicle. And then uh, we run uh, our positive lead from the battery through our contactor and to uh, A2. And then the negative, uh, which is uh, S, I'm sorry, goes to A1. Okay, let me, let me say that again so there's no confusion. It comes from our positive side of the battery through our contactor and to A1. The negative side connects to S1 and you know, to the negative side of the battery. And so anyway, that's your series circuit and we have a switch here to turn on our contactor. When we turn on the contactor, the motor should come on and run. As indeed it does, with 12 volts, it will only reach so many RPMs, and that's it. That's why we only use 12 volts. Series bond DC motor will crank as many RPMs based on the amount of voltage you put into it. And so with no load, they can really spin. It's mounted on a workbench here that's uh, portable. This is a portable workbench. And so uh, it, it's secure to the workbench, but the workbench isn't, you know, um, bolted to the floor or anything. And so it shows you how smooth this is, is running. Very smooth. What little noise you're hearing is actually the bearings and the adapter. This uh, adapter coupler um, setup has two bearings that support that um, coupler as uh, we showed in, in a previous uh, video. And so that uh, um, is what little noise we're hearing, is basically those bearings being wound up to any RPMs for the first time. And so um, the motor itself is actually uh, quite quiet. units we do that have a, uh, where we use a taper lock coupler and, and don't use this uh, type of adapter with the built-in coupler, it, it would be just extremely quiet. So there you have it. It is now ready to be installed in the, uh, in the vehicle. And so that, uh, that's on an upcoming uh, episode, probably in the next week or two, so be looking for that. Uh, in the meantime, I may even uh, sneak another video in, um, because we do drive the Carmen Ghia, and so uh, uh, as soon as we weigh it, and because uh, we want to do that with the uh, stock engine and setup, and then... Uh, are ready to stick this in in the next week or two. Uh, but first, uh, we'll probably do a little series on the batteries. Show you the batteries that uh, we use on most of our projects, um, and, uh, or at least that we're using on this one. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll tell you a little bit about them, why we chose them, um, the specs, so forth give you an idea of where we're going to place them in the vehicle, so forth, kind of the, the overview. And then later on, after we uh, build the battery mounting system and everything, we'll, of course, show you uh, the batteries being installed and, and that portion also. So this is just a quickie, just to show you the, the uh, uh, motor uh, assembly. 
And uh, when you purchase uh, the VW uh, package from us, it comes assembled like this. Um, and so you don't have to, uh, to do it if you don't want to. Or uh, we can send it to you a la carte and you can assemble your own components, your own flywheel, um, clutch choice, whatever you want. But this is what we use on our uh, packages that are available on our website. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Okay, just to show you a little closer view of our um, our um, securing method for the uh, motor on the workbench. There you have the uh, wooden cradle that it sits in. Like I said, we also use that uh, cradle then fits onto a transmission jack and the motor fits on the cradle. Our system for securing the motor so that it doesn't uh, move around or torque on us and so that's a little bit of a, a close-up of that so let me remove the uh, um, system and, and give you a little more close-up of the, of the wiring okay here's the uh, close-up of the uh, wiring this is your jumper that uh, goes from A2 to S2 as I uh, described we come from the battery and then to our uh, contactor there's our switch and that then comes over here to um, the positive side which is as you can see a1 and then the negative terminal connects to S1 so that's the uh, setup and uh, very simple you saw how quickly and easily it went together and I'm uh, trying to do it and describe it at the same time which can be a challenge for me and so you can see how easy it can be if that's all you're doing is installing this quick and simple once you have the components the conversion goes together actually quite quite quickly let me uh, let me show you one other thing that you want to uh, do and and be aware of since these things are not scripted and um, I kind of get ahead of myself sometimes. One of the things that uh, you want to do when you first put the flywheel on um, is confirm that your uh, distance between your adapter mating surface and the back edge of your flywheel is what it was with your stock setup, with your gasoline engine. We want to replicate that dimension. And that's part of the, the design criteria for your, your adapter. And so, uh, adapter and coupler. And so we always double check that and confirm that that is right on. And so, we know what it's supposed to be. And uh, we'll double check that. I typically I like to rotate it counterclockwise. We'll uh, check it in multiple multiple spots. Make sure there aren't any issues. The other thing that I'll do is not only just check it uh, in, in different spots on the flywheel, but then I will take and check different spots on the flywheel 
and on the adapter to make sure that everything is as it should be. This is the time to find out if there's any abnormalities is before you install it in the vehicle. And so this one looks good. And so we, you saw us run it up. It runs. It's smooth and balanced. Um, everything's good to go. So one of the next times we'll see you, we'll be sticking this in the Carmen Ghia. We'll discuss removing the gasoline engine just briefly, um, but we'll show you the, the install of the electric motor. They actually go in very, very easily, and uh, we'll show that to you. We'll show you why we use the transmission jack, just because that just really makes it much easier than using a floor jack or uh, if you were attached by the lifting hook. So anyway, once again, we hope that you uh, uh, found some value in our video and appreciate your watching and all the best on your conversion.